Hello, today's video is one on that of silver Fibonacci upside. We're going to take a look at some long-term charts of this silver market. We're going to start going way back to 1991, looking at a monthly chart spanning close to a decade, a little over eight years in time. What we can see within this chart is one that's a down move, down trend bear market that has lost at that time 73% from its highs. That is a massive decline from the highs of about 14 and two thirds on the earlier parts of this chart. That's a massive decline in itself, let alone it was already down at that point over 70% because its highs was 50. Going from 50 down below, down to five is losing 90%. So this is greater than a 90% gain. Okay. When I look further at this chart, I can see that within this downtrend, it had a major breakout. The key bottom was roughly around five. Then it breaks all the way up to 11, but find support within this band. I look forward to break this resistance level. It doesn't even test it to state that this downtrend, which was fairly overdue at that time frame, but not really, to end. And when you see a system like this where, okay, we find support, established support here right at this line, and then again it goes down there, breaking this support tells you there's a good chance you're going to have a fast move going down, failed move, fast move, and that was exactly the case. It did support or did resist this area roughly in a range of about 7 to 9 and of course it made new support with a low of 355 roughly in the four dollar area the next chart it's a two month chart and what do we see within this chart here well we can see that the 355 low was pierced by two cents not, not that much it's pretty much a matching low some other key levels right in here about four dollars which was resistance and support and support and support you have this high here, roughly around six, then you go to about eight, little over eight, eight again, and then it breaks out. So that's what the chart is showing us. So the key range is between four and eight. And when you use Fibonacci uh, upside, it is calculated by taking a market in a sideways range, which can then give you the key levels you're looking for in breakouts. You wanna know where we're going? Well, this will help us with the, with the determination of such. There, of course, is the four to eight dollar range, which worked out fairly well. Again, a lot of the other parts was up to about 450, but support here, support here, and well, resistance in there. When we calculate the Fibonacci ratio, which is 61.8%, we're going to use it in the upside targets. Now, how do I calculate 61.8%? Let's start off within the Fibonacci sequence. It starts off with two numbers, zero and one, and the sequence continues on to infinity by adding the two previous numbers, zero and one, well, that's one. Two previous numbers now are one and one. Well, they add up to two. One and two is three. Two and three is five. Three and five is eight. Eight and five is 13, and then so on and so forth. And when you add a whole bunch of those together, Start getting the triple quad digits and anything higher, and you divide the two numbers by each other, the highest from the lowest, you're going to get a 61.8% ratio. So for the formula for this uh, upside, tar uh, for the upside targets is we take the high and the low and we subtract the difference, which 8 minus 4 is 4, and then we'll multiply it by the cumulative Fibonacci level, which will start at 1.618, and add the low. The First level is 1047. So now for all future levels, and we'll get to that shortly, we'll take C, which is equal to C, multiply 1.618. This is old computer programming that I, I used to do. I don't anymore. And that means C at this stage would be 1.618 right here. And we multiply 1.618. That gives us 2.618. So the next time we use C, it'll be 2.618. Later on, after later on, what we'll do is we'll multiply it again by 1.618 for 4.23. Again, we'll go over that in a little bit. So let's take a look more. So some, some now at some further charts. 
This line chart is about a one year chart going back to uh, 2005 to 2006. And I got a line for 1047 drawn in. That was a key Fibonacci level, which was not resistance. When an area that's supposed to be resistance is not, there's a pretty good chance that it's just going to go straight up, which would usually go to the next key level. The other two situations is finding resistance at this level, and the other one is just finding support at it. Obviously, a fast move went higher. Some of the key information within this one, Friday, uh, March 17, 2006, $10.47 was the intraday high, and it closed at 10.37, which meant on that day, it went right to that key level perfectly, and then down a percent. Two trading days later, on Tuesday, that level was taken out uh, with an intraday low of 10.10 and a high of close to 10.60, which meant 5% from low to high and a close very close to the highs at 10.55. And the next day, it closed at 10.47, thus finding support within this level. Therefore, the resistance mark then was only short term. And as you're going higher, well, you'd expect to go to the next level, which we'll talk about soon. But for now, we can see that this level was major support. Here it wasn't, it just goes right below it. Okay, is this going to be resistance? Yes, it is, because we can see it hit here, go below there. Makes the higher low, breaks above it. So now when you're here, you say, no, it was support at that level. And then you'll start to think, is this a possible failed move? Eh, I guess possibly, a move going from 10 and a half to over 13 is a decent gain, but support was found, support was found, support was found on multiple levels. So now let's talk about calculating this. We take 1.618 and we multiply that again. We get uh, 1047 for this Fibonacci level, and I got a whole bunch of them written down, 18 key levels. Therefore, feel free to write these down. They may come in handy many, many years from now. Or maybe it's many, many years from now when you're watching this, and they might come in handy now. So we'll go back to that previous chart, and we'll stick in that 1447 level. Okay, it was resistance with a small but noticeable pierce above. Large decline here. However, situation where it did not come back to Fibonacci. But a fast move back to this level, finding resistance pretty much perfectly, microscopic pierce above. Significant high or low, now you're breaking it. Well, this is your typical failed breakout. And it was a little bit of a failed move going below it. Now the level, of course, we talked about the support already. So now let's just switch the charts up. We can see further support again at that 1047 level. More resistance again at 1447. This is the area where it broke above that resistance, consolidating first. But you can see, interestingly, this candle in here, where it breaks above it and then comes back and finds support. Very, very interesting and not uncommon. And then the next move, taking us to 2008, wow, pretty close to perfect resistance here at 2094. Now you find support within this band, but there's your breakout and Notice here, no support here. Maybe some short term, but nothing long term. And the volatility just soaring. Major, major economic collapse happening. Stock markets falling. Chaos all over the world. But hey, the recovery came soon. Or so they say. Right here we can see support was found at 1047. Again, a big move higher, however a large pierce below this level. I don't even know if it's a pierce. It's a pretty decent move from here. But the next time it came down, it fell right below, and then it's resisting at 1047. Eight, which was the breakout level, would be the next significant support breaking below here. 846 was the low. It says 840 here. Either way, eight and a half, we'll say, is the low large pierce above eight. Consolidating in here, resisting in here, resisting again. This level here, decent pierce above this level. And at that time of September 21st, 2010, it's battling the level again as resistance. 
you, you would have been hoping for support to be found at the high 18 level, but you never know. Maybe it would just break through it. Well, here's that breakout point right here. It did. It did break through it. And consistently making it up pretty close. It was about a dime off to the 3142 level, which happened to be the next level. Found a little bit of resistance and started to make a few lower lows and lower highs, bottoming around the 26 level. And then the next time it came up to it, boom, had another breakout. And then the move went all the way up to 50 at the end of April 2011. Then it came down, large pierce above the level right in here. Making a lower high from this one, breaking support, and then the rest of this chart for two years consolidating at this 31 and a half level. Pretty much right in the middle of this range from this top to this bottom. After this occurred, well, this takes us to the entire move from 2005 to 2014. It did the same thing again, all the way down to this 2094 level, a level that was resistance here, ah, with that large pierce below in here. But considering that it's been bottoming at 18, it has been finding support where resistance was found here and again in here. But just like this, trading right in the middle of this range, a little bit above and a little bit below. My analysis tells me that if support here, which has been tested four or five times at the low 18 area, if it's taken out, the next key level, well, that's that 14 and a half mark. On the contrary, breaking out above this, the next level, and here. And I've given, of course, all of the significant levels within. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.